afternoon and a happy new year, everyone. This is John Storm speaking from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, where in just a few minutes, two great college teams, the Fighting Illini of Illinois and the UCLA Bruins of Los Angeles, meet in the traditional Rose Bowl traffic. We've just heard the national anthem played, ladies and gentlemen, by the combined bands of UCLA and the Tournament of Roses band from Pasadena Junior College. The Bruins of the University of California at Los Angeles fighting now to maintain their undefeated season and make it 11 victories in a row. The fighting Illini with seven wins and two defeats trying to add another to the win column and top of UCLA from the rank of undefeated. With me here in the broadcasting booth is NBC's director of sports, Bill Stern, who will give you the play-by-play -play account of the game. The game is packed with all its pre-war flavor. The crowds are still filing in, but you can almost count the empty seats on one hand. The game is a complete sellout. Now, in just a moment, we have some interesting facts we want you to know about the teams. But first, we want to say that this game is being broadcast in the United States exclusively by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated station. Also, by special arrangements, this game is being broadcast by shortwave to every corner of the globe where our armed forces are still serving. And so, for you folks at home, we send them all wherever they are a great big New Year's hello. Heads he calls. And heads it is, so Illinois wins the toss. Well received. Illinois has elected to receive. Illinois has elected to receive. And uh, Captain Case will show you on Captain Case will defend the South goal. It's going to be Ernie Case, the quarterback, who will kick. Referee says, are you ready? Both of them say they are ready. Here comes Case forward. He boots it. It is not a particularly long kick. It's going back to the Illinois 25-yard line. Sam Zatkoff takes it. He's up to the 30, up to the 35, and hit down on the 39-yard line. Sam Zatkoff, the left end of the fighting Illini, brings it from the 25 up to the 39 for a run back of 14 yards. Referee puts it down on the 40. Says his body fell forward to that point. So now, as the Rose Bowl begins from Pasadena, California, the granddaddy of all bowl games. The Illini go back into a huddle. Calling the signals as quarterback, Perry Moss, Orthodox T. Nothing strange on that. No man in motion at the moment now. Here comes the first running play of the afternoon. The teams are ready. They go. Ernie Case fades back for a forward pass. Perry Moss. Perry Moss shoots it out on the flat. And it's completed. Zetkoff takes it over 40. He's down to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 25, down to the 20. He's down to the 15. He's knocked down to the 14 yard line. Sam Zetkoff, left end of Illinois, goes all the way to the UCLA 14 yard line. Striking hard and fast, Perry Moss, their quarterback, throwing from his own 35. He hits Sam Zatkoff right on the button on the UCLA 40, and he streaks down the sideline, reaching the UCLA 14 before he's brought down. Referee puts it down on a 15-yard line, so it's Illinois' ball first and 10 on the UCLA 15-yard line. T formation, this time a line buck. Russ Steger to Buddy Young. Buddy Young going around the left side of the line. He's down to the 10-yard line and knocked out of bounds on the 10. A five-yard gain. Buddy Young streaking around his own left end behind beautiful interference with Rykovich and Steger leaguing them around and throwing body blocks that jar the UCLA Bruins as they try to bring him down. And it's going to be second and five. Perry Moss calling these signals. He shovels it off to Buddy Young. Buddy Young's going around the other side of the line. He's down to the five-yard line, down to the three. He stopped on the three-yard line. Perry Moss to Buddy Young. Young cutting off his own right tackle. He streaks down to the UCLA three-yard line, knifing his way over his own right side. And it's down on the three-yard line. It is a first down for Illinois. First down, three yards to go. And the Bruins ask for timeout. Perry Moss calling these signals for Illinois. Out of the huddle they come. He shovels it off to Russ Steger. Steger into the center of the line, and I don't think he made it. He was stopped about a yard short of the goal line. He went to the one-yard line. A big pile up on the goal line. Stopped one yard short. He picked up two yards. Perry Moss, quarterback of Illinois, out of the T formation, handing it off to Russ Steger on a direct line plunge into the center of the line. And the ball is one yard away from the goal line. Way out to the right comes Buddy Young in motion out of the T formation. Perry Moss gets right down behind the center. It's a quarterback sneak. Moss into the center of the line, and I don't think he made it. Perry Moss, the quarterback of Illinois, tried a quarterback sneak, and I think the Bruins were ready for him, and they stopped him. Ball is one foot away from the goal line. One foot away from that goal line. Here comes Illinois out of the huddle very quickly now. They're running out of a T formation. Nobody in motion on this particular play. Perry Moss shovels it off to Julie Rykovich. Rykovich into the center of the line again, and he scores for Illinois. Left halfback of Illinois in a direct shovel pass from Perry Moss goes off between his own left guard and center. Illinois is out in front, six to nothing, and here comes the attempted conversion. The kick is up in the air. It is not good. Not good. Illinois six, UCLA nothing. Teams run back up the field now. Up they come. 
Illinois striking with great rapidity, taking the ball on their own 25-yard line and going 75 yards in six plays. Meekly, who just kicked the extra point, will kick. And here come the Illini forward. They booted. It's an end-over-end kick going all the way down to the UCLA five-yard line where it's taken by Cal Rossi. He's up to the 10, the 15, up to the 20, the 25, and he's knocked down on the 25-yard line. And the Bruins now get their first whack at the ball this afternoon. First and 10 for UCLA on their own 25-yard line. Mac Wenskunas, captain of the Illini team, is the man who made the tackle, assisted by All-American Alex Agassi. Illini are out in front, 6 to nothing. Here come UCLA on for their first running play of this afternoon. This is the first time they've had their hands on the ball. In motion comes Cal Rossi, cutting parallel with the line of scrimmage. And it's a quick shovel pass. Ernie takes over the ball. Baldwin, Baldwin takes to the 40, up to the 45, up to the 50. He's down to the territory. He's knocked down on the 45-yard line. on a sensational play that UCLA's been using all year. Illinois must have scouted that one, but they couldn't stop it. Case taking a direct pass from center. It's really a hand back. Just stands straight up in the air and throws right over the center of the line. Rose Bowl game. Illinois leading 6 to nothing in the first period. UCLA's man in motion this time is Al Hoyce. It is Cal Rossi. Rossi tries to drive over his own right tackle and gains nothing. As a matter of fact, he's hit a yard behind the line of scrimmage. The forward motion of the play had carried back to the line of scrimmage, so there's no loss on that play. Jack O'Ren, left guard of Illinois, is the man who made that stop. Gain of about a half a yard on the play. The ball carry was tackled so severely that he was hurtled backwards some five yards. But the forward motion of the play had carried it to the 45-yard line, and now we're going to have a penalty, an offside penalty against UCLA. Five yards carries them back to their own 49-yard line. But it's still first down, but they now have 15 yards to go from their own 49. UCLA in a shovel pass this time. Hart stepping to Al Hoist. Hoist going around the right side of his line. He's down to the 45. Stays in the deep close to the 40. He's down to the 35. He's knocked down to the 34. Oh, these teams really have offenses. UCLA running it down to the 34-yard line. Incidentally, that boy, Al Hoist, played at Stanford back in 41. He's now playing for UCLA. With a ball down on the Illinois 34-yard line, a shovel pass off to Art Steffens forward, and that's the common nomenclature for exactly what he did. He got his head and shoulders between his own left tackle and left end. Billy Chambers, the right tackle of UCLA, had his mitts on him and couldn't hold him. And he drove forward with his knees driving like pistons up to the 34. Here's a shovel pass to Julie Rykovich. Rykovich coming over the right side of the line. He gets to the 40-yard line. He's knocked down on the 40. Gain of about six to seven yards on that play as Julie Rykovich of Illinois who's a, not only a great offensive player, but a whale of a defensive player. Playing a lot of good football. Julie Rekovich out of Gary, Indiana, stands an even six feet tall, weighing 203 pounds. Just gave him a first down and picked up six yards on this play. He's 23 years old. He incidentally played for Notre Dame's national champions in 43 and then transferred back. Uh oh there's the end of the first period. End of the first period. The score from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena is UCLA 7. And the fighting Illini from Illinois, six. Ball is resting on the Illini 41-yard line. It is second down, three yards to go. Here's a quick shovel pass to Ray Grierson, the Grierson, the new fullback. He plunges his way from approximately the 41 up to the 44-yard line. Gain of about two and a half to three yards on that play. Here comes Illinois out of the huddle very quickly. Perry Moss calling these signals. T formation, balance line. Traditional T, nobody in motion as of the moment. The boys hunch down. It's a direct pass from center back to Ray Grierson, the fullback. He goes plunging through the center of the line, and he reaches the 50-yard line, or just shy of the 50-yard line, before he's brought down. There is one of the very few plays in the lineup, or in the roster, that Illinois has in which the quarterback does not handle the ball. Perry Moss faked to handle it, but the ball was passed right back through his legs, first through the center's legs, then through the quarterback's legs, back to the fullback, Ray Grierson, took a direct pass from center, plunged up to the middle of the field, reaching the 50-yard line, and fell forward to the UCLA 49, where they've allowed the play to stay. Here's a quick pass with Perry Moss fading back to throw, and it's completed down to the 38-yard line. Completed beautifully to Mr. Jim Felix, the right end. He takes it down on the 38-yard line, and Illinois is marching down the field. That's another first down. That's three in a row for him. Fighting along there, down on the UCLA 38-yard line. Call the 37-and-a-half-yard line on a forward pass. Perry Moss throwing it. It's a shovel pass this time to Buddy Young. Young's racing around the right side of the line. He's down to the 35, down to the 33. He's knocked down on the 33-yard line. Buddy Young, who can do the 
the sprint champion of the Big Ten, now racing around his own right end and proving why he's one of the fastest men in football as he stages a foot race with Al Hoist, the left halfback of UCLA, out running Hoist, out step and the fullback has to come across the field and make the tackle. We've just begun the second period of the football game from Pasadena, California. Illinois is trailing by a single point, seven to six, UCLA leading. Illinois has the ball down in UCLA territory. Here comes a shovel pass out to Buddy Young. Young fading back to throw it. He can't get it away. He's been hit behind the line of scrimmage. He's dropped all the way back on his own 38-yard line. Not on his own, on UCLA's 38-yard line. Losing five yards on that play. Bill Clements, the right guard of UCLA, is the man who hits him all the way back on the 38-yard line, on UCLA's 38-yard line. And it was Bill Clements with an assist by Bill Chambers, right guard and right tackle, who made that stop stopped Buddy Young from passing it. Buddy Young had cocked his arm back as though he was going to pass it. Here's the T formation with Perry Moss throwing a quick lateral out to Buddy Young. Young fading back as though he's going to throw a pass. Instead, he's running from the 50-yard line. He's back to the 45, down to the 40, down to the 45, down to the 30. Stays on his feet, down to the 25. He's not got a bounce on the 21-yard line. your screwy plays. What do you see that one in the newsreel? Perry Moss threw a lateral 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage to Buddy Young, who then, to make it more complicated, went another 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, so that at one point in that play, he was 25 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And then Buddy started a move. He zigzagged his way down the right field sideline until he was belted out of bounds by Johnny Mikovic, the left guard of UCLA, on the Bruins 22-yard line. Here's a shovel pass on a cross back to Rykovich. Rykovich goes all the way to the 15-yard line before he's brought down by Burr Baldwin, left end of UCLA. He's brought down on the 15-yard line. And that is down on the 15, and that is a gain on that play of a good six yards, and Illinois is moving. Georgia 20, North Carolina 10. Uh oh Mr. Kaiser, you're going to push a football down Pine Street tonight. Georgia 20, North Carolina 10. All right, here we go now. Illinois ball down on the UCLA 15-yard line. Ball is given to Julie Rakovich. He's swaying around the right side of his line. He takes back the throw forward pass into the end zone. And the juggling act is done by Billy Huber. Billy Huber catches it, but they roll. He steps out of bounds. Billy Huber does a juggling act in the corner of the end zone, in the corner of the end zone. And they're ruling that he caught it after he had stepped over the rear of the end zone. And listen to this crowd. They don't like that decision. Perry Moss calling his signals again. Perry Moss shovels it over to Julie Rakovich. Rakovich to Young. Young's turning down to the 10, down to the 5. He's on his feet, the 3, the 2, and he's knocked out of bounds, I believe, on the 1-yard line. Buddy Young, Buddy Young streaking down the sidelines, is knocked out of bounds on the UCLA 2-yard line, and now a Illinois ball. First and 2 to go with 11 minutes of playing time remaining in the first half of the Rose Bowl game for Pasadena, California, with UCLA leading 7-6, to six, but Illinois has the ball on the Bruins' two-yard line. And you should see this crowd out here. They're standing up just as though somebody said, hey, get off your seat. Everybody's standing up waiting to see what's going to happen now. Here comes Illinois out of the huddle very quickly now. It's Perry Moss. Perry Moss shuffles it over to Buddy Young. Young's in and over. He scores. Touchdown for Illinois. Perry Moss on a shovel pass hands it off to Young. And Young is going so fast that I'll guarantee 85 of the 90,000 people in this stadium didn't know that Young had that ball. He hit the line like an express train. He's only 5 feet 5. He only weighs 163 pounds. But he can do 9-5 on the 100. And brother, he was doing it. There's the pass from center. The kick is up in the air. It is good. UCLA will receive. And that's the story of the Rose Bowl game from Pasadena with 11 minutes of playing time remaining in the first half of this football game. There comes the kickoff. It is going back to the UCLA 15-yard line. It's taken by Gene Rowland on the 15. He's up to the 20, up to the 25, breaks into the clear, gets to the 30, and is knocked down on the 31. Takes it on the 15. Gene Rowland comes up to the 31. Yes, sir. When you talk about Roy Regals, you can forget the wrong way run, and you can remember that he was the captain of a great team and considered by coaches whose opinion I 
honestly respect as the greatest center that has ever played in this Rose Bowl. On their own 31 yard line. Ball is shoveled off to Al Hoyce. Hoyce is coming around the left side of his line. He's up to the 33 and he's knocked out of bounds on the 35 yard line. Knocked out on the 36 by Sammy Zatkoff, the left end of Illinois. So, with 11 minutes of playing time remaining in the first half of this football game, the Illini climb back out in front. Running up to the line of scrimmage, they're trailing by six points, and they want to get those back if they possibly can. The case, Ernie, the general, back. He shovels it off to Gene Rowland. Rowland is trapped behind the line of scrimmage by Fabe Serpico and Jackie Wren. Jacko Wren, and they pin him back on approximately the 33-yard line. Call it the 32 and a half. Uh-oh, there's going to be a penalty on that play. Handkerchief was dropped down on the 34-yard line. Let's see what it is. No penalty on the play, but what is ruled is the ball is returned to the line of scrimmage as he was hit down so quickly and so hard that his knee touched the ground at the line of scrimmage. The ball is returned to where his knee touched the ground because that's where the horn blew. It is third down, eight yards to go. Ernie Case calling these signals in motion. Goes Gene Rowland out to the left. It is Case back for the forward pass. Looks for fair ball and can't get rid of the ground. And he finally throws it in this place all the way back on his own 19-yard line. He shoveled it away from him, but I don't think I... He shoveled the ball away from him. It was fallen on by Lou Agassi, the left tackle of Illinois, but I don't think they're going to allow that as a recovered fumble. What he did, Ernie Case couldn't get rid of that ball. He was tackled. He was being spun around on his own 20-yard line, and he just more than half dropped the ball. It could be ruled intentionally grounding a forward pass, and if it is, it's going to be a penalty against UCLA. However, the ball was fallen on by Lou Agassi, the left tackle of Illinois, and the Illini Rooters thought that Illinois had recovered, which they had not. On his own seven-yard line is now fourth down, 23 yards to go. UCLA has the ball back on their own 19-yard line and cases in the rear of a punt formation. He's going to put it. He does. He, he watches it very carefully. He doesn't drop on it. Neither does he pick it up and run with it. But the ball finally stops rolling as it reaches the Illini 40-yard line. So Paul Patterson is coming at right halfback, replacing Buddy Young. Now they are using a combination six and seven, dropping the seventh man into the line as the Illinois play begins. Illinois ball first and ten on their own 49-yard line. Ray Gerson's in it, fullback. Paul Patterson's out to the right. And it is Perry Moss back for the forward pass. He throws a long one, and it's completed down to the 43-yard line. Billy Huber takes it for Illinois on the 43, and he's dropped in his tracks by Ernie Case. Ernie Case drops him on the, let's call it the UCLA 42-yard line. We have nine minutes of playing time remaining in the first half of the football game from Pasadena in California, the world-famous Rose Bowl, with the West Coast champions, UCLA, unbeaten, playing Illinois, which is the Big Nine champion. A crowd of 92,000 people jam-packing every available seat in the Rose Bowl. Couldn't buy, borrow a bag of ticket. Paul Patterson in motion. Perry Moss back for another forward pass. Cox is down back, looks for his man. He can't get rid of that ball, and he finally throws it in desperation himself, and he may be caught on uh, intentionally grounding a pass. He was back on the, his own 49-yard line. He was being tackled, and he slung the ball down the field, but the referee in this case has not called it intentionally grounding a pass. Cal Rossi comes back in at right halfback. Gene Rowland goes out of the ball game for UCLA. We have eight minutes of playing time remaining in the first half, and the score is... University of Illinois, 13, UCLA, 7. T formation, Perry Moss calling these signals. Moss shovels it off to Grierson. Grierson bucks his way through the center of the line, finding a nice hole. He dives with a pushing motion, knifing his way between his own center and right guard, and he picks up a first down for Illinois. He reaches the UCLA 38-yard line before he's finally brought down by Mike Dimitro, the left guard of UCLA, and Jackie Myers, their fullback. Perry Moss, he's been in his plate every single minute for Illinois so far. He's the only backfield man who has. He shovels it off to Paul Patterson. Patterson coming around the left side of his line. He gets down to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 29-yard. The goal line, so there was, wasn't even close to being a completed conversion. And Meekly is just in for this kick. He tried that extra conversion. Didn't make it. Now he's going to boot it. He does. Not a particularly brilliant kick, but a hard one to handle. It is squirming away from two ball players. Goes all the way back to Al Hoyce, who takes it in his end zone. He's five yards behind his goal line. He's up to the five. The five up to the 40. Up to the 35. Up to the 40. Up to the 35. Up to the 50. Up to the 45. Up to the 40. Up to the 35. Up to the 45. Up to the 40. Up to the 50. Up to the 10. 105 yards. Oh, a touchdown.
the ball game. I'm sorry to scream at you like that, but you couldn't have heard me if I hadn't. Kick is up in the air, and it's good. for a touchdown. That's the longest run I have ever seen in 14 years of broadcasting. Kick goes back to the Illinois 30-yard line was taken by Mike Owens. The right end. Owens is up to the 40, up to the 45, and he's knocked down on the 47-yard line. Score is now Illinois 25, UCLA 14. And time is ticking away. There are 26 seconds remaining in the first half of this football game. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, I know that screaming must have sounded horrible, but you wouldn't have gotten that play if I hadn't done it. 103 yards is the official measurement on that run. Tommy Stewart calling these signals. He shuffles it off to Rakovic. Rakovic cutting around the left center line, stays on his feet, cross the midfield stripe, and gets down into UCLA territory. Crossing the 50-yard line, getting down to the 49. There are 19 seconds remaining in the first half of this football game. Well, that's one you can tell your grandchildren about. They won't run it any further unless they move the stadium back a little, make it bigger. Get a nice ball now, second down, five yards to go. It is Tommy Stewart in the quarterback sneak going down to the UCLA 46-yard line as the half ends. There is the end of the first half, and the score at the end of the first half is University of Illinois 25, UCLA 14, and we just watched Mr. Al Hoysh, the left halfback of UCLA, go 103 yards for a touchdown. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the color and the halftime ceremonies, he's my very good friend and an excellent gentleman, Mr. John Storm. Johnny? Thank you, Bill Storm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's no doubt about it. We're seeing a great ball game here today. The fighting Illini of Illinois have really been living up to their name in the first half. But that sensational 105 yards by little Al Horsch really brought all of these customers right up to their feet a minute ago. And that UCLA fell really rang out. <laughs> You can tell right now from the crowd at this very moment the real enthusiasm that's being displayed here, and especially for that last play that we just saw. Now for a recap of the first half in this ball game, ladies and gentlemen, here is Mr. Jack Lightcap of the NBC Sports Department in Hollywood. Thank you very much, John Storm. Well, that 103 de- three-yard touchdown run really has us rocking up here. How about it, John? You betcha, John. Oh, what a run. Well... Let's get up to it. Let's take statistics in the first half. Illinois made 13 first downs. UCLA made five. Illinois attempted 11 passes, and they completed three. UCLA attempted 12 and completed four. In the first quarter, on the first running play of the the game, Perry Moss passed 15 yards to Sam Zatkoff. Zatkoff ran to the UCLA 14. Then Buddy Young carried twice to the three, and after Perry Moss fell at a quarterback sneak, Julie Rakovich hit left guard for a touchdown. Score, Illinois 6, UCLA nothing. The try for the extra point was not good. Then UCLA came back. On a fourth down, Ernie Case went back to punt formation, but instead of kicking, Mr. Case rifled a pass to Al Hirsch, and Hirsch went all the way to the Illinois two-yard line. After two attempts into the line failed, Case scored on a quarterback sneak, and the score was tied at 6-6. Mr. Case kicked the extra point, and UCLA took the lead 7-6. In the second quarter, the Illini started from their own 23 and never gave up the ball that they'd scored. The plays that set up the touchdown were two sensational runs by little Buddy Young. On one run, Buddy went 23 yards, then he took a lateral from Moss and rocketed him to the two-yard line. Again, it was Young, and Buddy shot into the end zone standing up. That made the score, Illinois 12, UCLA 7. Don meekly kicked the extra point, and Illinois led UCLA 13 to 7. Later in the quarter, with six minutes to go, the Illini started from the front 49-yard line, and again went all the way when Paul Patterson scored from the four. The score then, 19 to 7. The try for the extra point was not good, and Illinois led 19 to 7. 
Later in the period, with just about two minutes to go, the Illini took a UCLA kick at midfield. With Patterson doing the heavy work, the Illini team scored again when Perry Moore sneaked over from the one-foot line for the Illini 25th point. Meekley's conversion was not good, and the score was 25 to 7. Then came the sensational 103-yard touchdown run by the Lyle Hirsch. Only 143 pounds, but he went like a rocket. Nobody laid a hand on him. 103 yards, the longest run ever made in the history of the Rose Bowl. The score at halftime here at Pasadena is the University of Illinois 25, UCLA 14. Those teams are on the field. Let's listen to a cheer from the UCLA rooting section. from the great UCLA rooting section across the field. Both teams are on the field. The referee and officials are out at the center of the field. In just a moment, our game will be resumed. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, here is Bill Stern. Back in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. We're starting the second half of the football game. This is Bill Stern speaking from Pasadena. Illinois has just booted it to UCLA, but the kick went out of bounds, so it'll have to be kicked over again. Jocko Wren at left guard, Lou Agassi at left tackle, Sam Zatkoff at left end, Tommy Stewart at cornerback, Dyke Edelman at right halfback, Julie Rakovich at left halfback, Russ Steger at fullback, and it's Steger who boots it. There it is, up in the air. It's going all the way down to the UCLA three-yard line where Jerry Shipke, starting at right halfback, takes it on the threes, up to the five, up to the ten, up to the fifteen, up to the twenty, gets away from another man, stays on his feet, goes to the twenty-five, and he's hit down on the twenty-seven-yard line. Here's the starting lineup for UCLA of the second half. Left end, Burr Baldwin, left tackle. Hoxie Griswold, left guard, Mike Dimitro, center, Don Paul. Right guard, Bill Clements, right tackle, Billy Chambers, right end, Tommy Pierce, quarterback, Ernie Case. One wing back, Sal Weiss, who went 103 yards a moment ago. The other's Jerry Shipke and the fullbacks, Jack Myers. All right, we're ready to start the football game. Start the second half. Score is 25 to 14 in favor of Illinois over UCLA as we start the second half of the football game. Jerry Shipke carrying the ball, goes from roughly the 27 up to the 29-yard line, fumbles the ball as he's hit. And there's that deathly silence in the Rose Bowl as they untangle to see who recovered. It's recovered by Mike Demetra, the left guard of UCLA. So UCLA recovers and recovers their own fumble. It'll be second down coming up nine yards to go on that particular fumble play, a gain of one yard. UCLA out of the huddle very quickly now. Ernie Case, their general, calling these signals. Al Hoist is in motion. A quick flip pass out to Hoist. Hoist takes it back on the 20, gets up to the 25, and a swarm benders. He reaches the 27. Tommy Stewart, Julie Rykovich, Russ Steger all hit him down. A lateral, Frankie, or rather Ernie Case, back to Al Hoist. Hoist took it a good five yards behind the line of scrimmage and had a whale of a battle to fight his way up to the line of scrimmage. Their quarterback, Ernie Case, right, right down behind the center. Jerry Shipke's in motion, running parallel with the line of scrimmage. Case back for the left-handed forward pass. He throws it up intended for Tommy Fears, the right end. Fears goes high into the heaven on his own 37-yard line, but not high enough. And the ball goes down for an incomplete forward pass, sailing out of bounds. And we do hope you're enjoying it. Ernie Case back in punt formation, standing back on the UCLA 17-yard line. Here's the kick. It's up in the air. End over end. Buddy Young is racing up to Mika. Takes it on his own 31. Starts back up the field. Gets to the 34. Goes away from one tackler. Retreats back to the 30. Goes back to his own 25. He's racing across the field. Is up to the 30. Up to the 35. Up to the 40. Up to the 45. Stays on his feet. Crosses the midfield stripe. He's down into UCLA territory. He's knocked better bounds on the 42. Three players are injured on that play. Three players are laying on the field as Buddy Young went all the way back to his own 22 and then ran an upfield down to the UCLA 42. Lou Agassi is injured and Babe Serpico. Those are two Illini linemen. They're both lying flat down on the ground. And Mike Demetro, the left guard of UCLA, is also injured. He's on some All-American teams this year, so he's been All-American three years at two different schools. Time is back in. T formation. Terry Moss calling these signals. He gives it to Buddy Young. Young tries to go through the center of the line and his stop cold. Gains nothing. Buddy Young, right halfback of Illinois, as he tries to vault his way between his own right guard and center. He left his feet. You know he's only five feet five inches tall. So he tried to hurdle about three or four six-footers, and he hit him amidships.
Exactly. It is second and ten now. They didn't gain anything on the last play. A shovel pass and then a fumble. Perry Moss tries to shovel it to Buddy Young. Buddy Young isn't there. Moss recovers his own fumble, but loses three yards on the play. As the ball rolls up to the UCLA 45-yard line, lost the three yards, third down, 13 to go. Illinois is leading UCLA 25-14 to in a ball game which has been replete with thrills. All right, D formation for Illinois. And it is Moss shoveling it to Buddy Young. Young fading back to pass. Instead of passing, he's going to run with it. He's swarmed under the 43-yard line. Knocked out of bounds on the 43. Returns from the 45 to the 43. As he comes laterally across the field from one side to the other, but cannot go downfield as Jackie Myers hits him. Throws a body block, which drives little Buddy right out of bounds. Standing in the tailback of that punt formation is Mr. Perry Moss. He boots it. It's up in the air. It's going back into the UCLA end zone. Cal Rossi lets it bound out of the rear of the end zone. Automatic touchback. It'll be UCLA's ball first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. UCLA out of the huddle very quickly. Now they have the ball first and 10 on their own 20-yard line thanks to that touchback. And it's a shove off to Cal Rossi. Rossi bucks his way from the 20 up to the 27-yard line before he's knocked down. A terrific driving one play. He hit the line hard, punched right on through, smacked for a hole, found a nice hole, knifed his way through with his shoulders, and went through so hard that Mac Wenskunas, the roving center of Illinois, was pelted backwards for a good three yards on that play. All right, in motion goes Mr. Cal Rossi, the right halfback of UCLA. In the meantime, Skip Rowland carries the ball but gains nothing as he moves from the left halfback position directly forward, bolting through between left tackle and left guard, but running into Alex Agassi, the right guard of Illinois, for no gain. So it is third and two. Five to 14 in favor of Illinois. Here comes UCLA out of the huddle very quickly this time. It's a cross buck with Skip Rowland carrying the ball. He's up to the 30, gets rid of another man, and he's knocked down on the 31-yard line. Knocked down on the 31 by Chick Maggioli, the left halfback of Illinois, who once played for Notre Dame. If that's complicated, let me tell you that he played as a transfer, a Navy transfer, during the war. In any case, the general of the Bruins calling these plays. Cal Rossi starting out in motion. A quick shovel pass thrown out to Skip Rowland. Rowland gets the ball back on the 30-yard line. Can't advance it a foot and lose it about two yards on the play. As Al Mastrangeli, Jack O'Run, Alex Agassi, and Bob Kunz all come in and hit him down. There was something wrong in the UCLA backfield on that play. The signals were not clear. Roland was not moving forward when he got the ball. Uh oh, we may have a penalty. Referee Mr. Tunney is in talking to the two captains, and it's going to be a penalty against UCLA. So Illinois sacrifices five yards to keep the downs moving along. It is second down, 12 yards to go. Would have been first and 12 if they'd taken that five-yard penalty. Actually, it would have been first and 17. Here is Mr. Frank Case back, or rather Ernie Case back to throw another forward pass. He's retreated all the way back to his 15-yard line. He throws it out. It's completely the ball forward. And forward takes up to the 40. He goes up to the 41-yard line. He's knocked down by Dyke Adelman. And the right halfback of Illinois finally gets him. Ernie Case, quarterback of UCLA, buzzing a hot one right over the left side of the line to Burr Baldwin, who takes it on the dead right and advances it to the UCLA 40-yard line. And that is almost a first down. It was a long pass. It was thrown all the way from the 18-yard line and caught on the 35. Never was thrown from way back to the line of scrimmage. The general, Ernie Case, getting down behind his center now. He takes the ball, gives it a skip, skip Rollins into the center of the line. He goes up to about the 45 and picks up a first down for UCLA. And the Bruins are moving down the field. It is a first down for UCLA. Scores 25 to 14, the Illini lead. Now UCLA has the ball first and 10 in their own 45. Cal Rossi plunging over his own right tackle. Bill Clements, his right guard, leading him. He picked up about three yards. Al Mastrangelo and Russ Steger. Mastrangelo the center, Steger the fullback. Backing up the Illinois line, stop him. Again, a two yards on the play. It'll be second and eight. Illinois is changing its defense. Ray Elliott has switched defenses. He's using a five-man line. He'd been using a six-man line all during the first half. And he is now... Overbalancing to the left to pull UCLA out of position, and he is using a five-man line. First time he's done it today. It's Case back for the forward pass. Cox is on back, looks for his tire, throws it out, completed to Skip Rowland, rolling the ball, one down, one takes one of 50. He goes all the way down to the Illinois 40-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds on the 38. And the UCLA Bruins are moving down the field. That's another first down for UCLA. The Bruins begin to show why they're the champions of the Pacific Coast. Tommy Stewart, quarterback and safety man, had to come up and make a save on that. UCLA's ball. They started all the way back in their own 20. They've got it, got it down to the Illini 39-yard line. Ernie Case slipped a good pass back to Skip Rowland. Rowland fades back to his 49 and can't get it away. He fades back to his own 49, then takes two steps forward, across the midfield stripe, falls forward to the Illini 40, let's call it the 47-yard line. 
And Sam Zatkoff, the left end of Illinois, stops him there. There's a loss on that play of a good eight yards. As the Fighting Illini leading by two touchdowns, which loom ever larger. Now they got a big 47 yards to go for it. Ernie Case calling his signal. Skip rolling in motion. It's Case back to throw forward. Pass cuts his arm back. Looks for the man. Can't find it. He's going to run with it. He's back to the 45. He's back to the 43. And he's knocked down on the 43-yard line. Ernie Case brings the huge crowd of 93,000. Rabbit football fans sitting on a sunshiny afternoon in Pasadena. The temperature up in the 70s, watching UCLA battle to get back into this game as they are pushing Illinois down the field. Time's back in again. Bill Stern speaking from Pasadena, California. It's time to play football, and UCLA has the ball down on the Illinois 42-yard line. Third down, 14 yards to go. In motion goes Cal Rossi, parallel with the line of scrimmage out to the left. It's Ernie Case fading back to throw a pass. He's a left-handed pass. It's a long pass. It's intended down for Rossi. Rossi gathers it into his arms on a 20, but he's out of bounds. He gets it down on the Illinois 20-yard line, but he was one foot out of bounds when he caught it. That is the second time that's happened to UCLA this afternoon. They had what looked to all appearances like a touchdown, but the man had stepped over the rear of the end zone, and that was ruled that he'd cut it out of bounds, and now a 35-yard forward pass is nullified by the fact that, well, the gentleman, Mr. Cal Rossi, has to take it out of bounds. He can't catch it inbounds. Score is 25 to 14, and UCLA is trailing. There's the kick. It's angled to the sideline. It's keep it away from Dyke. The Dyke Edelman gets under it on his own 10-yard line. He starts back up the field. He's up to the 15-yard line, and that's all it gets back to. Down to the 14, he goes in down hard. Ernie Johnson, left half back of UCLA, hits him down. First down, 10 yards to go. The Illini's ball on their own 14-yard line. You finally got a team into the Rose Bowl and wanted this victory as badly as they do. Buddy Young carrying the ball. He's up to the 15-yard line, falls his way forward, reaches the 18-yard line before he's hit down by Hoxie Griswold, left tackle of UCLA. Gain on that play of a good five yards as Buddy Young with all the speed that he possesses. Barry Moss calling his signals. He shovels it off to Buddy Young again. Buddy Young comes up to the 20-yard line. He's knocked down on the 20 on the identical same play. Picking up about two yards on this play. The ball squirted out of his arms, but he fell forward on the ball to recover his own fumble. So Mike Demetro, the left guard of UCLA, who made that tackle, had no chance to make a recovery. Illinois 25, UCLA 14. Here is a shovel pass thrown off to Buddy Young. He's up to the 20, up to the 25, stays on his feet, goes to the 30, gets away from another man, gets up to the 35-yard line, and he's knocked down on the 35 as Illinois begins to move up the field. Illinois carrying the ball up to their own 35-yard line with lots of yardage to spare as the fighting Illini move up to the 35-yard line. UCLA is one of the last schools in the United States, big-time schools, to take up football. They only started in 1919. Here's Rykovich carrying the ball. He gets up to the 40, crosses the 40, gets to the 43-yard line. It's knocked down on the 43 on a direct line plunge, knifing his way between his own left guard and left tackle. He is stopped by Meyer, Jackie Myers, the fullback of UCLA. Less than 30 years have gone by, and they've been in the Rose Bowl once before, and they're in it again this afternoon. Here's a shovel pass to Rykovich. Rykovich going on the right side of his line is on his feet. He's up to the 45, up to the 50. He falls forward into UCLA territory. He's hit down by Jackie Myers. Defensive fullback for UCLA. That's another first down for Illinois, and the Illini are beginning to roll again. And the boys are so pepped up. They're so nervous, so full of energy. They're jumping up and down, these Illinois players, as they get up out of each huddle. You can see Alex Agassi, he's shaking his fist up in the air as much as to say, come on, guys, let's keep going, we're rolling now. T formation again, Perry Moss on the quarterback. He shovels it on the cross back to Buddy Young. Young gets past the 50, goes to the 45, stays on his feet, he's down to the 40. He's down to the 37-yard line, and Ben Regis, quarterback of UCLA, brings him down. There is another first down for Illinois, and the Illini are driving. And once again, you can see the team spirit they've got as they get up so quickly out of these huddles. And Agassi again tells the boys, come on, let's go. Let's keep moving. T formation for Illinois. A direct pass back to Russ Steger. Steger tries to go in the center of the line. That's the second time today Illinois has tried to fool UCLA by not letting their quarterback handle the ball as they, he generally does on the tee. No gain on that play whatsoever. It'll be second and ten coming up. Steger at fullback for Illinois now. He's in the center of the T formation. It is Perry Moss to Buddy Young. Young comes around to the center of his line. He's down to the 30-yard line, and he stopped on the 29-yard line. He circled his own right end. He started to skirt it. He came running around as fast as he could in a wide circle, and he was hit down on the 20-yard line by Hoxie Griswold and Mike Dimitro. Ball is resting down on the UCLA 29-yard line. 
Comes Illinois out of the huddle very quickly. They have the ball down on the UCLA 29-yard line. It's direct pass to Julie Rakovich. Rakovich going over the right side of his line. He powers his way to the 25 to the 24-yard line. For a five-yard gain before he's brought down by Ben Regis, defensive quarterback of UCLA. And there is another first down for the Illini. Harry Moss calling these signals out of a T formation. They're ready to go again. He gives it a rush. Steger. Steger trails his way down to the 20-yard line. Stays on his feet. Goes to the 15, down to the 13-yard line. He is knocked down on the, let's call it the 13-yard line. Call it the 11-yard line. And Russ Steger goes plowing through so hard, he hits Mr. Jim Tunney, the referee from Loyola, and takes Mr. Tunney down with him. All right, it is another first down. That's the 18th for Illinois this afternoon. And it's Perry Moore shoveling it off to Buddy Young. Young's going around the right side of his line. He's down to the 9-yard line, down to the 8-yard line. He's knocked down on the 8-yard line. Referee said he fell all the way forward to the 6-yard line. Referee said that his body fell forward to the 6-yard line, and that's where they're putting the ball down. T formation again. Perry Moss calling these signals. He gives it to Buddy Young. Young's coming around the side of his line. He is stopped on the 3-yard line. Stopped on the 3-yard line. Gain a one, well, let's call it a gain of two and a half yards on that play, almost three. So there are 50 seconds remaining in the third period. Illinois is only three yards away from another touchdown if they can keep going. There are 45 seconds remaining in this third period. Buddy Young carries the ball into the center of the line. I believe he has stopped about a foot shy of the goal line. Where do we see exactly the referee says he went over and scored for a touchdown? On the phone, the referee says that he is calling a playback. He is calling the play back. Buddy Young went over, and the signal was given that a touchdown had been scored, but the play is being called back. Play is being called back. Perry Moss, the crowd stands up. Moss on the quarterback sneak goes into the center of the line. He's right on the goal line. Referee's pulling him off one after another. At least he's got a first down. Let's see whether he got a touchdown or not. He went right down to the goal line. The crowd settles down to see whether this is or is not. He haven't signaled as yet whether it is. It's a first down. The ball is still a foot off the goal line. It is a first down, but not a touchdown. It is a first down, but not a touchdown. So it is Illinois' ball. First down, one foot to go for a touchdown, and there is the end of the third period. At the end of the third period, the score is University of Illinois 25, UCLA 14. Illinois has exactly one foot to go and four whacks at the line to make it, to make it a touchdown. Let's see whether they're going to do it. Perry Moss gives the ball this time and a cross back to Buddy Young. Young goes in and scores! Scores for Illinois. The Illini lead 31 to UCLA's 14. Illinois 31, UCLA 14. And now in comes Mr. Meekly and Tommy Gallagher. Meekly will try to kick and Gallagher will hold of the Illini team. There's the pass from center. The ball is touched down. The kick is up in the air. It is good. Illinois leads 32 to 14. Incidentally, played at UCLA back in 1925 on a whale of a fine coach. As is Mr. Elliott of Illinois. Meckley comes forward to boot it, and the game is back underway. There goes the kick. It's going back to the Rose Bowl 10-yard line of UCLA. Where Al Hoist takes it. He's the boy who went 105 yards before he's up to the 20, up to the 25, up to the 30, up to the 35, up to the 40, up to the 45, up to the 50, down to the 45, down to the 40. Set all kinds of records here this afternoon by running 103 yards for UCLA. Just took that kick on his own 11-yard line and raced down the field, and the crowd thought he was going to go 89 yards for another touchdown. He was finally stopped on the Illinois 38-yard line, and it is now UCLA's ball on the Illini 38-yard line. First and ten. In motion goes Mr. Al Hush. Ball is shoveled off this time to Cal Rossi. Rossi to Johnson. Johnson goes from the 38 to the 36 for a two-yard game. Bob Primuski stops him. Russ Steger assists. Bern Seligers come in at center. Mac Wenskunas goes out for Illinois. That's CLA's ball. Second down. Eight yards to go on the Illini 36-yard line. And here come the Bruins back to the line of scrimmage, and they're all pepped up, too. They run back. Hoysh in motion, going out to the right this time, waiting for the pass from center. Ernie Case fading back to throw left-handed forward pass. He throws it intercepted back to the middle. 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 Intercepted back to
quarterback of Illinois intercepted a forward pass on his own 27-yard line and just went 63 yards for a touchdown. 64 yards for a touchdown, playing cowboy music on a guitar. Well, he can play a little tonight. He just made a nice run. Gallagher and Meekly again for Illinois. The Illini leading 38 to 14 now, thanks to a brilliant run by Russ Steger, their fullback. Oh, there's a bad pass from center. Goes all the way upfield to the 20-yard line where Chick Maggioli picks it up. He's touched down immediately by Tommy Pierce, the right end of UCLA. And so the point after touchdown is not good. I think he'll get down and look at it. So he climbed right down on his hands and knees, looked at it, and got penalized five yards for delaying the game. There goes the kick. It sails all the way back to the UCLA 10-yard line where Al Hoyce picks it up on the 10. He's up to the 15, up to the 20, up to the 25, and he's knocked down on the 30. Al Hoyce, who every time he gets his mitts on the ball, brings this huge crowd of 92,000 people in the Pasadena Rose Bowl up to their feet because they remember only too well the 103-yard run he made, which was the longest ever seen. Runs it up to the 30-yard line. Roy Kurish comes in at right end. Tommy Pierce goes out. That's a change for UCLA. Score is 38 to 14 in favor of Illinois over UCLA. Ben Wright just calling these signals. In motion goes Al Hoyce. He's going out to the right. Uh-oh, something's wrong in the backfield. An attempted forward pass is not good. Intended for Roy Kirsch, the right end of UCLA. It is thrown by Ben Regis, the quarterback. He throws up to uh, Karash, the right end, and the pass goes incomplete as Karash gets his hands on the ball but can't hang on to it. However, there was a horn on that play, and UCLA is walking backwards as though they expect a penalty, so the penalty can be against the Bruins. Let's wait and see what it's going to be. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. In other words, you are legally required to keep seven up there. Something went wrong when the UCLA signals that time. And whoever dropped into the backfield, the backfield man did not correspondingly go up onto the line, so they were penalized five yards for already handing six men on the line of scrimmage. Rossi in motion this time. A rather hoish. Hoish in motion, and it's Regis back to throw forward pass. He finally throws it, a very lukewarm pass, a babbler thrown up in the air. It doesn't come anywhere near being completed. It is intended for Jack Brown. But it is not close to being, being caught because Mr. Brown is some 15 yards away from it. As a matter of fact, the closest man to it is Billy Heiss. So the boys going to present his bride with a lovely victory, a Rose Bowl victory. And you can't ask for more than that. UCLA out of the huddle very quickly right now. At least, of course, if the game stays the way it is right now. Ben Regis in the tailback. He's waiting back to throw a forward pass. He throws it. It's completed up to the 35-yard line. Taken by Johnny Johnson, the fullback. Johnson goes to the 40-yard line. Is not that just shy of the 40-yard line. Referee says he'd reach the 41. However, the referee rules that his foot went out of bounds all the way back on the 36. So even though he had digressed down the field some five additional yards, it is nullified by his being out of bounds on the play. It's fourth down, four yards to go, UCLA's ball. And Regis is back on his own 25-yard line for the Bruins. He's going to boot it. Back is Paul Patterson for the Illini. There goes the kick. It is going up the field. Mr. Paul Patterson lets it go out of bounds, and it goes out on the Illini 23-yard line. So it'll be Illinois' ball first and 10 on their own 23 with 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining to be played in the Rose Bowl. Leon McLaughlin comes in at center, and Don Paul goes out for UCLA as Illinois takes over. Ivan gets a well-deserved hand as he does. His place is taken by Ernie Johnson. Now Tommy Stewart is calling these signals for the Illini. He gives it to Julie Rakovich. Rakovich comes around the right side of the line. He's up to the 25 and finally forced out of bounds as he reaches the 30-yard line. Rakovich comes all the way from the 23 up to the 30 for a 7-yard gain. It'll be the Illini's ball. Second down, three yards to go, and they are leading. With 12 minutes and 40 seconds to play, 38 to 14. Tommy Stewart calling the signals out of a T formation again. He gives it on a cross back to Paul Patterson. Patterson's up to the 35. He's up to the 40-yard line and knocked down on the 40. Paul Patterson, right halfback of Illinois, and a, a deceptive cross buck, which watches Stewart fake it to Rykovich. Rykovich, in turn, fake that he's got it, giving it to Grierson on a handoff. Actually, Rykovich hasn't got it, therefore he can't give it to Grierson. Stewart keeps it all the time, and coming behind Stewart, circling around behind him, is Paul Patterson, who takes it and cuts over his own left tackle. A deceptive play, which picked up a first down for the Illini and their 20th of the game. And this time, an attempted shovel pass off to Julie Rykovich. Works, Rykovich goes to the 45, picking up five more yards, and the Illini are moving down the field. Rose Bowl game from Pasadena in California with UCLA trailing now, 14 to 38, as Illinois is leading and making that lead stand up. Here comes Illinois out of the huddle very quickly now. Tommy Stewart calling these signals. 
A balance line out of the T formation goes Mr. Paul Patterson running parallel with the line of scrimmage. He's in motion. Ball is given to Grierson. Ray Grierson, the fullback. He goes head first into the center of the line of scrimmage. Head gain an inch and pounds the ball down in disgust. Gains nothing, absolutely nothing. And he is so mad, he bangs the ball down. Handling it like a loaf of bread, only he wouldn't throw bread down that hard. He just bangs it down on the ground, and he throws it so hard it bounces up into the air over the player's head. Illinois ball on their own 45, midway between the two sideline stripes. Here come the Illini out of the huddle, running out of their traditional tee. Rykovich in motion, parallel with the line of scrimmage. He's coming out to the right. It's Stewart back to throw forward, pass for Illinois. He throws a bad one down on the ground. Not good. Intended this time for Rykovich. Rykovich would have had to be a snail to get that when He had to go down lower than his shoelaces, and he couldn't do it. Way down on his feet, and he had to let it hit the ground first. Tried to trap the ball, but couldn't do it. Holding penalty called on Illinois, and it's called from the 39-yard line, 15 yards, in the closing period of the Rose Bowl from Pasadena. Eidelman back in punt formation. He boots it. Waiting to take it is Ernie Johnson, the left halfback of UCLA. He takes it, fumbles it, the ball gets away from him, and it's recovered by UCLA's Liam McLaughlin on the center, all the way back on the UCLA 31-yard line. Here's what happened. Ernie Johnson took that ball on his own 35. It hit his chest, bounded away from him, bounded right into the arms of Ray Grierson, the fullback of Illinois. Grierson tried to hold on to the ball. It got away from Grierson, and Liam McLaughlin, the third man to have his hands on it, was the center of UCLA. He recovered for the Bruins. It's their ball first and ten in their own 32. Midway between the two sidelines. That score is 38 to 14. Illinois leading UCLA. First year of the five-year pack between the Big Nine and the West Coast Conference. Uh-oh. There's an obvious offside on this play, but they're going to run the play anyways. Ernie Johnson throwing a long one down the field. Intercepted beautifully by Guy Galen of Illinois. He takes it on the Illinois 45. He's back up the field to the 50-yard line. He is knocked down on the UCLA 45-yard line. There is what every coach in the country will tell you. Run off every play. Don't stop when the horn blows. Because now, if that penalty was against UCLA, it will give the Illini the chance of taking a five-yard penalty of the play, and naturally they're going to take the play. And let's see what it is. Backfield in motion against UCLA is declined. So Edelman intercepted. A high jumper can do 6-8 on the high jump. Here we go. This time it's a T formation. Rykovich back to throw forward. Pass for the Illini. There goes a long, long Illinois pass going all the way down to the goal line. And it is cut beautifully by Billy Heist. Oh, oh, hold it. Heist goes high into the air, brings it down into his bench, but it's ruled that Jackie Brown, the right halfback of UCLA, knocked it out of his hands. He had it for a moment right on the goal line, and that squirted out of his hands. We had called it completed. It looked like he had it. He'd gone high into the air and fallen right down to the ground. And Billy had that ball in his mitts. Jackie Brown, however, was defending successfully enough to knock it out of his hand just before he had possession of the ball, and so it's an incomplete forward pass. Tommy Stewart calling these signals out of a T formation when the fourth and final period. Stewart throwing a pass right over the center of the line, completing to Ike Owens, the right end. Owens takes another 40, goes down to the 35, gets down to the 33, down to the 33, 32 yard line. And that is another first down for the Illini as they are moving down the field on UCLA. UCLA battling with all they've got. This, despite the score, is a good UCLA team. And they're doing everything in their power to thwart the fighting Illini from Illinois, but it's an inspired group of Indians who've come west from Champaign-Urbana. Stewart this time on a cross but gives it to Ragovich. Ragovich is down to the 30, down to the 25, stays on his feet, gets down to the 20, and he's knocked down on the 21-yard line. Tommy Stewart. Julie Rakovich, the left halfback of Illinois, goes all the way down to the 21-yard line before Ernie Johnson, the left halfback of UCLA, can stop him. And it's down to the 21-yard line, and it's another first down for Illinois. And have done everything in their power to stop Illinois. Now they're throwing a seven-man line at him. Here's a cross back. The ball goes to Ben Pickett, the new fullback of Illinois. Pickett drives forward from the 20, reaching the 19 for a gain of two yards. There are nine minutes and 25 seconds remaining in this game. Bert LaBrucherie changing his defense repeatedly, constantly during the game. Trying to find the right combination that can stop this Illini attack. 92,000 people in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Here comes Illinois out of the huddle very quickly now to second and eight. Tommy Stewart takes the ball this time. He fades back for a forward pass. He throws it down. And he is knocked out of bounds on the UCLA 21-yard line. And the Bruins have the ball again. Now let's see what they can do with it. UCLA's ball first and ten on the left 21-yard line when Ben Righteous, second string quarterback. Goes high into the air and brings one down for an interception. Eight minutes and 55 seconds remaining to be played in the Rose Bowl game in Pasadena, California. Goes out. That's a change for UCLA. It's now the Bruins ball and they're trailing 14 to 38 and time is fleeting. There are only eight minutes and some odd seconds remaining in this fourth period. 
38 to 14 is the score. It is Ben Regis back who made that pass interception to throw a long pass. He's throwing it way, way up the field. Intercepted by Illinois. Intercepted by Adam. Adam into the Illinois. Takes him to the 240, up to the 45, up to the 50. Gets down into UCLA territory. He's knocked down on the Illini 45 yard line. Illinois has the ball. First and ten on their own 45-yard line. Stewart calling these signals in the T formation. He gives another cross back to Edelman. Edelman gets across the 45, reaching the 47-yard line, and he's brought down on the 47 by Billy Chambers, right tackle of UCLA. Moves the ball up to the 48-yard line again at three yards on that play. It'll be second and seven. Eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining to be played in the fourth and final period. The line are running all afternoon out of that T formation. Stewart on a cross back hands it to Zabarak. Tommy Zabarak just came in at left halfback. Zabarak goes from, well, let's call it the, a gain of a good three yards on that play. That is almost a first down on the play. Call it a gain of about five yards. That's much closer to it. And he moves it down to the UCLA 45-yard line, and that is a first down. They have outstatisticized, if I may use such a word. UCLA 23 first downs to eight so far. Tommy Stewart calling his signals. Tommy hands it off this time to Dyke Edelman. Edelman fights back to throw on the line. That pass there. It goes way down the field. It is not good intended for Jimmy Bailick, the right end. Bailick goes higher into the air, gets the tips of his fingers on it, but Ernie Johnson, left halfback of UCLA, goes a little higher. That's it down to the ground, incomplete. Score is Illinois 38, UCLA 14. In the world-famous Rose Bowl from Pasadena on New Year's Day. May I, on behalf of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations, thank the Tournament of Roses. Here we go. Time's back in again. Higginson at fullback now for Illinois. Zabarak at left halfback. Here's a quick opening play with Zabarak going from his own, well, we'll call it over the right side of the line. He moves for the gain of about two yards. He started on the UCLA 45. He reached the 43 before he was finally tapped down. Leon McLaughlin, roving center of UCLA, is the man who stopped him. A little better than seven minutes remaining in this football game, and the score is 38-14 to 14 with Illinois leading UCLA. Here come the Illini out of the huddle. They're driving on down to what might be another touchdown. Stewart right down behind the center. Spading back for four. Fast cuts his arm back. Looks for the man. He can't get rid of that ball. He's going to run with it. He's all the way back in his own territory. He's up to the 50. He's down to the 45. And he gets away from one man. Reverses the field. And he's finally knocked down on the UCLA 44-yard line. The man back. That is Ernie Johnson. Dyke Edelman's back in front formation for Illinois. He is standing just on his own side of the 50-yard line. He boots. Waiting to take it is Ernie Johnson. He comes forward to his own 10. Takes it on the 15. He's up to the... 17 up to the 20, and he's knocked down just as he gets to the 20-yard line. UCLA's ball. Here is a line buck with Ernie Case giving it to Johnny Johnson. The fullback Johnny runs from about the 20 up to the 25-yard line, picking up five yards before he is brought down to the ground. A five yards on that game. And that is Mr. Johnny Johnson, the fullback of UCLA, who made that game. UCLA has the ball on their own 25-yard line. In motion comes Jerry Shipke out to the right. It is Ernie Case back to throw forward pass. He retreats all the way back to his own 20-yard line. Intercepted on the 10-yard line. He's back to the 10. Racing into the end zone. Racing into the end zone. And scores a touchdown for Illinois. Here is what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Ernie Case, quarterback of UCLA, tried to throw a forward pass from his own nine-yard line. Stanley Green, the left tackle of Illinois, went high into the air, intercepted it on the 13-yard line. It had hardly left the passer's hand when the interceptor went high into the air and brought it down. And Stan Green, the left tackle of Illinois, ran the remaining 13 yards into the end zone, and the Illini lead 44-14. to there is the attempted conversion to the extra point. It is good. 45 to 14. 45 to 14. He's going to come up and boot this ball. All right, here we go. Mr. Bingaman comes forward. He boots it. It's a bad kick. It rolls all the way back, however, to the UCLA 15-yard line. A hard one to handle. Jenny Rush takes it in the 15. He's up to the 20, up to the 25. And he's knocked down on the 31-yard line. UCLA is now hopelessly outclassed in this football game. They have one distinction this afternoon. One of their players, Al Royce, Al Hoysh, rather, score went 103 yards for the longest run ever made in this bowl. It is Ernie Case back to throw another forward pass. He's the UCLA. He takes it on the 40, gets up to the 43-yard line. And as he goes up to the 43, Leo Cahill and Ray Sizak, the right guard and center, respectively, of Illinois, 
dumped it backwards back to the 41. And that's where the rule was completed. UCLA's ball up to their own 41-yard line. I think they're going to bring the line sticks in to see whether this is or is not a first down. The reason these are long passes is Ernie Case, the quarterback of UCLA, who's throwing these, drops back some 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Here is Mr. Ernie Case back to throw another forward pass. He throws it. It's high up into the air. Jerry Shipke is under it, but can't catch it. Incomplete. Thrown by Ernie Case. It was intended for Jerry Shipke. Right half back of UCLA, and it is not good. There's another pass by Case. It's completed to go throw again. The right end of UCLA takes it all the way down on the Illini 31 yard line. Illinois came west with 42 players, and they're using them all. Ball is now resting down on the Illini 31 yard line. It is UCLA's ball as they're moving down the field. Joe Groh is a freshman. He's a boy just caught these two passes in a row. Here is Ernie Case fading back to throw another pass. Cox's his arm back, looks for his man. There goes a long pass. It's going all the way down to the five-yard line. And it is not good. And it for Billy Hart, the left end. Billy Hart goes high into the air, but he can't quite bring it down. Tommy Stewart, the quarterback. However, they may rule in a fair side. They are ruling Stewart in a third with a pass catcher. On the Illini five-yard line, so they're giving it to UCLA on the Illinois five-yard line. And listen to this crowd. by Ernie Case, Billy Hoyt went high into the air on the five-yard line, and the ruling is that Tom Stewart interfered with him. Therefore, interference is called, and it's UCLA's ball first and five to go for the touchdown down on the Illini five-yard line. Ernie Case calling these signals again. In motion this time when Jerry Shipke, the ball goes to Ernie Case on a quarterback sneak. Ernie takes the ball from the center, goes right into the center of the line. He got down to about the two-yard line before he was finally stopped. Highest previous score in the Rose Bowl game was 49 to nothing, and that was in the first game when Michigan beat Stanford back in 19-2. This is 45 to 14. Ernie Case back for a forward pass, can't find a man to throw it to. He elects to run with the ball, and he's trapped back on the 13-yard line, so he loses three additional yards. So we're a moment ago, UCLA had the ball down on the Illini five-yard line. They have now been pushed back to the Illini 13-yard line. We have two minutes and 15 seconds remaining to be played. Les Bingham in the right tackle is the man who stopped him. Howard Hunt comes in at fullback, replacing Art Steffen, who goes out for UCLA. It is now second down, 13 yards to go. It's Case back again for another forward pass. He finds a man, throws it down, and it's thrown over the man's head. Jerry Shipke, right half back at UCLA. Did it for Shipke on the goal line, and Shipke could not go high enough in the air. Incomplete, so it'll be third down, 13 yards to go. Still UCLA's ball down on the Illini, 13-yard line. Game 45 to 14 already. There's a pass and it's knocked down. Ernie Case throws a pass. It's batted right back into his own arms. There's one for the books, Mr. Ripley, if you're listening in. Ernie Case throws a pass. Joe Buccini, the left end of Illinois, hits it with his hands, knocks it right back into Ernie Case's arms, the man who threw the pass, and Case takes the ball, recovers his own pass. That's one that I don't believe I've ever seen before. A passer throwing a ball and catching his own forward pass, but so help me at Harry. Ernie Case, the quarterback of UCLA, threw the pass. Joe Buccini he went high into the air, hit it just after it was thrown. He batted it right back into Ernie Case's arms, and Case caught his own pass. And on the play, he lost the yard. Fourth down, 19 yards to go. We have only a minute and 50 seconds remaining to be played. It's Ernie back to throw another pass. He throws it. It's completed down to the five-yard line. Taken on the five-yard line by Billy Hoyt. He's down to the one-yard line. He is down to the one-yard line, but remember, that was a fourth down, and he is on the one-yard line, and I believe the Illini will take over on their own one-yard line. They do. Illinois takes over on their own one-yard line. Almost a touchdown. Billy Hart, the left end of UCLA, took that pass from Ernie Case on the five. Real forward to the, to the one-yard line. He was stopped on the one by Tommy Stewart, who made the save. And it's the Illini's ball since it was a fourth down, and they had to have goal line to go because they had started first and five from the Illini five-yard line. A minute and 20 seconds remaining in this football game. Illinois has the ball on their own one-yard line. See what they're going to do back there. Tommy Stewart takes the ball. Hands it on a cross buck this time to Zabarak. Zabarak comes up to about the five-yard line before he's hit down. Stewart is so deceptive on his handoff to Zabarak that they think Stewart's got the ball, and Stewart is tackled back of the goal line. We're coming into the last moments of the game now. Tommy Stewart in a quarterback sneak goes from the five up to the seven. Illinois is just going to run the clock out now. Five yards, and it moves the ball back to their own, five, own one-yard line. They had the ball on the six. And it is second down now, 10 yards to go. We have 40 seconds left in this Rose Bowl game. In motion comes Sabarek.
back. He's coming parallel with the line of scrimmage. It's a quarterback sneak this time with Tommy Snowden in the center of the line. He goes from the one up to the five. Regular quarterback sneak, and now the seconds are ticking away. There's only 30 seconds left in this game. Score is Illinois 45, UCLA 14. Pasadena, the Rose Bowl in California. End zone, they lead 45 to 14, and this is just about the last play of the game. Tommy Stewart calling these signals out of a T formation in motion. Goes Kosniewski of Illinois. He's running out to the right, into the flat, and it's Stewart and another quarterback sneak. They're not trying to pick up yardage. They're trying to get this game over. They're three seconds, two seconds, one second. This game is... There she is. She's all over the final of the football game. The Illini win 45 to 14. That's all there is. The goalposts are coming down. But to bring you the color, here's a gentleman who can do it, Mr. John Storm. All right, John. Thank you very much, Bill Stern. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that tells the story. We've been seeing a brilliant ball game, and the score isn't really indicative of the fine football that we've seen here this afternoon. Both teams have played brilliant football. There's the, the goal post down. The people have swarmed right out onto the field. The goal posts are down, and all of the <laughs> various students in the school there are really tearing that old goal post down to shreds. 